adapted extremely well to human colonization and can live almost anywhere. Now to investigate how these birds actually live their chirpy little lives, let's go and see magpie fanatic Hayden, who has dedicated over 30 years of his life to this magnificent species of bird. Hi Hayden, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. Now you're with us today, so you can tell us a bit about the lives of magpies, about how they feed, breed and nest of course. So what can you tell me about that and our loving audience? Well, Georgia, magpies breed in their own territory in which they defend against other magpies. Nesting generally takes place between August and October. However, magpies living in Northern Australia appear to be breeding earlier due to the increasing climates. The female usually does all the work. She selects the nest site, builds the nest herself with barely any assistance from the male, incubates the eggs which usually numbers from one to six and from around three, three weeks and feeds the young for four weeks after hatching. She also insinuates the intercourse and has to place herself in a conspicuous place on a branch and calls sweet, so sweet songs to him, sometimes taking up to several attempts to grab the male's attention. Wow, sounds like my life story. That's not the end of it. The mating procedure is brief and unceremonious and right afterwards the male usually takes his leave. We get it. Male magpies are like human males. Moving on. Can you tell me something about the chicks? Well, within two years, the young magpies are forced by their parents to leave their territory. They join a group until they can gain a place in a territory as an adult breeding bird. However, many young birds can die in a few months of life due to poor weather conditions, lack of food, road traffic hazards and natural predators. That's awful! But what do magpies eat? Insectivores such as magpies need a protein-rich diet with lesser amounts of carbohydrate and fat and they have extremely high calcium requirements. Magpies feed on small insects and animals that live on or just under the surface of the ground, including grasshoppers, beetles, insect larvae, frogs and small lizards. During the day, it walks along jabbing its beak into the ground searching for food. It swallows small insects whole and uses its beak to break up food items before eating them. And what about the common swooping behaviour? What can you tell me about that? In contrast to popular belief, for most of the year, magpies are not aggressive. But for 46 weeks during nesting, they often defend their territory vigorously. People walking past may be seen as invaders of the territory, prompting the magpies to fly low and fast over the person, clacking their bills as they pass overhead. The experience of this magpie attack can be quite alarming, but it is usually only a warning. Only occasionally will a bird actually strike the intruder on the head with its beak or claws. 
If this unusual behavior persists, there are ways of reducing the risk of physical injury to humans. Chances are, if you get swooped, you're hitting a bit too close to home with a juvenile, and the magpies are overprotective parents. Thanks for that, Hayden. I've learned a lot about magpies and really appreciate your time. Hi, and welcome back. We're now going to go and talk to Climate Watch specialist, Dr. Emma. So, Emma, what's been happening in the world of magpies? Over the past few months, I've taken the time to observe some of the local magpies around Victoria. I managed to observe around 27 males and 17 females which is not surprising, as males are more actively defending the territory. Generally, my observations were of lone magpies. Only on rare occasions did I observe three or more magpies together. This graph shows the percentage of observations I recorded for different magpie behaviours. As you can see, feeding is by far the most common behaviour. So Emma, when do magpies usually feed? Well, Georgia, it's difficult to make any real conclusions about when they feed but they're often seen feeding in the afternoon. This next graph depicts location, and it's clear that magpies find much of their food by roads or nature strips. Over the past few months, I've also noted that at certain times of the day, in certain locations, I can always expect a magpie to be present, typically feeding. So from your research that you've done with Climate Watch, have you observed any differences in the way magpies are breeding these days? Well, I was not lucky enough to observe any real breeding or even magpie young these past few months. And why do you think that is, Emma? Well, this can be for a number of reasons. One, that magpie nests are very high up and not greatly visible from the ground. Another reason could be that the majority of magpie breeding occurs in people's backyards, where we don't really have access. I did, however, observe nest material collection as early as August 20th. While well, I was lucky enough to avoid much swooping over the past few months, I did observe some behaviour that did not appear to have anything to do with nest effects. One particular magpie crashed into my kitchen window whilst chasing a bird of another species. On a second occasion, a male magpie attacked another species of bird for food. I compared my observations to that of Climate Watch for the past couple of months and found similar trends. Feeding was by far the most observed behaviour over the country, followed by corn. Thanks for that, Emma. You've told us a lot about what Climate Watch is doing. Next on Environmental Biology, we're going to be speaking with Conservation Specialist, Derek. Let's go there now. Here we are at the Conservation Lab. Let's go inside and meet Derek. Hi, Derek. How are you going? Good, thanks. I'm happy to be here. It's great to have you. Can you please tell me about the conservation of magpies and just a bit about them in general, about what you do? Yeah, sure. So, the common magpie is found throughout most of Australia, being able to adapt to various living conditions. There hasn't been much research done in Australia to determine the effect of climate change on these birds, though. There has been research published, which indicates that the birds lay eggs early in the year dependent on rainfall or maybe temperature. It's unknown specifically which, though, and more data needs to be collected before this can be determined. There was also a case study which has so shown that the time at which magpies breed is partially dependent on the temperature of its environment. Magpies which live further north in Australia appear to have a breeding season which started earlier than its counterparts towards the south. Climate change will likely affect their breeding season further, and whether this is a positive or negative change remains to be seen. Unfortunately, even with the current data, it is difficult to predict their future trends, as rainfall predictions are not as precise as temperature predictions, and it will be difficult to combine data for analysis. However, it is unlikely that climate change would greatly affect the magpie, as they are a highly adaptable species. They are omnivorous, so the diet is so diverse that they can hunt for food throughout various seasons. So it looks like our friends the magpies won't be affected, unlike other species, by the increase in climate change concerns. Thanks for speaking on the show, Derek. Thanks for having me. That's all we've got time for today in environmental biology. We hope you've learned a lot about the Australian magpie. Have a good day.